No! No! Help! So if you've always wanted to bench 100 kilos, then stick around because this video is going to tell you how. Okay, so as I'm sure you've already gathered at this point, today's video is going to be about how you can bench your first 100 kilos, your first two plates, join the elusive club that it is. Or if you've already achieved the milestone, then there's going to be some tips and tricks here that can help increase your bench press to the max. The first important point to consider is that everybody's starting point is different. I went from benching 40 kilos for sets of three at 15, 16 years old to doubling 160 kilos at 22 years old. Five years later, I am now sitting around the 140, 145 kilo mark as a hybrid athlete. So I've accepted I'm probably never going to be as strong as I was when I was peak chonk, peak power lifter, but I am very happy that I can still shift three plates and convincingly move two plates around on a regular basis. So with that in mind, it's important for you to consider your starting point where you want to get to so that you can roadmap it out and plan effectively so you can chase down those good old fashioned gains. So for example, if you're six foot four and 100 kilos, you've probably got a higher starting point to bench 100 kilos than somebody that was five foot eight and 74 kilos. That's not a bad thing inherently. It just means that if you take that on board, then you can move at your own pace, enjoy your own journey and work towards things relative to your circumstances. I feel it's an important point to make because about 12 years ago, when I first stepped foot in the gym, I was comparing myself to that person or asking why could they do that and I couldn't. And it took away a bit of the pride, a bit of the enjoyment of the progress that I was making. So if your mate ends up benching 100 kilos before you do, then that's not a bad thing. It just means that they might have started from a slightly higher starting point. Secondly, let's cover the burning question, which is what's the big deal about benching two plates? Well, in simple terms, it is the sought after milestone in the gym bro community. And it is the milestone that signifies that you've done the work, you've got to this position, and you're ready to send it into gym bro universe. Rite of passage, and I envision it as being similar to the gym community as landing your first kickflip with a crowd of 100 is to the skateboarding community. However, it is important to mention that this is all dependent on your priorities and I'm not saying that everybody should absolutely be able to bench 100 kilos. I think there's value in being able to do so, but there are different priorities for different people. And you might be somebody that's putting all of your focus into your physique, into strength building, into putting on body weight, whatever it might be. Or you could be Mo Farah, where I can imagine that a 100 kilo bench press is pretty far down your priority list. Thirdly, it's important to have a clear plan of action. And I know I've said that in pretty much every single video recently, but it really is important. If you go into the gym with no intention, no plan, no structure, you can quite easily just make it up as you go along. And that's not gonna build the consistency and build the work that's gonna get your bench up, gonna get your performance up and build you towards two plates or beyond. So wherever that plan comes from, I obviously recommend that it's Omnia Performance. Whatever level you're at, then find yourself a program that's something you can stick to so you know what you're doing on what day and that you're benching more frequently. You're getting used to the movement, you're getting used to the demand, you're building your volume, you're building your intensity, you're improving the motor pattern and you are sending yourself straight towards the rite of passage that is two plates. So point number four is something that I think we all saw coming and that is the importance of technique. And I'm gonna break down three components that I think are important to mention within this context. That is grip width, that is arch, and that is bar path. So let's start with grip width. Hey, hello, uncomfortable angle. Yes, we're all aware, let's just move right past it. So grip width, what you're aiming to achieve is a vertical forearm. You want it to be perpendicular with the floor and pointing directly to the ceiling. You want to create tension through your elbow into your wrist and up towards the ceiling because if you collapse your wrists, you're gonna have a lot of pain here, there's a lot of stress going through there, and you're not effectively allowing your whole body to engage in the motion. So your biomechanics are gonna dictate what works best for you. Don't let anyone tell you that the best grip width is the one where your index finger is on the ring markings. That might not be the case if you have three inch arms. 
if you're a T-Rex, apparently. Any T-Rexes watching, make sure to hit the like button. So use the ring markings as a way to measure things and play around with what works for you, what feels good. Have somebody look at your technique, film it, and get yourself set up so you're one, comfortable, but two, you are creating some good drive through your elbows up to your wrists. So the second and most controversial moment of this video is discussing arching. And we're not gonna go full power lifter, let's maximize our arch, minimize range of motion, because that's generally not the focus of today's video. But what I do wanna make clear is that a bit of an arch is a healthy way to engage with the movement. You wanna squeeze your scaps into the bench, you want to create tension in your trunk, and you wanna give yourself a way to engage your feet with the floor. And I know what you're thinking, my feet with the floor, but Fergus, this is an upper body movement. Well, allow me to show you. The best way to get set up is to pull yourself through and find a way that you comfortably can get yourself dug in, in your scaps, so that they can become the foundation. As you can see, I'm pushing against my scaps, but they're embedded. Then I can create tension in my hips, which allows me to sort of drive and create tension from the floor to the bar. And from that point onwards, I have a healthy amount of arch. I'm not excessively looking like a prawn slash shrimp kind of bench presser but I have created a good stable trunk for me to then engage with a bench press. The thing to consider is bar path and the actual bench press itself. And the only cue I'm really gonna ask you to focus on is imagine that you're bending the bar in on itself because that's gonna engage your lats. It's gonna create tension in your scaps and bring your shoulders in, which is gonna protect them. If they're loose and up here and you're sort of guillotine pressing, then you're gonna be exposing your shoulders to quite a lot of risk and that's obviously something we're keen to avoid. So tuck yourself in, squeeze your scaps in, puff your chest out, imagine you're bending the bar in on itself and then imagine you're rowing the bar to your nipple line like so. So paused on the nipples here for dramatic effect, but this is essentially where you wanna be pushing and then you wanna drive directly upwards like so. So for our fifth and final point today, as I did in the deadlift video a couple of weeks ago, which if you haven't yet seen, I'd encourage you to go and do so, we are going to break down some of the key, <clears throat> break down some of the most important assistance exercises to send your bench press to the moon. So as is tradition, let's buy. So first up is the close grip bench press, which is a fantastic way to get some variation in the main movement. Bigger range of motion means more work through your pecs and more tricep dominance, which are both things that will carry over very effectively to your main bench press. I recommend that you do these in the six to eight rep range. It's important to balance out any pressing movements with pulling ones, so not to create any imbalances and have healthy, secure shoulders. That's why bent over rows are a fantastic assistance exercise because not only will they build upper back strength and density, but they will better train the motor pattern of pulling into your body as you do on the descent on a bench press. I recommend that you do these in the eight to 12 rep range. Next up, we have floor press, which is another fantastic way to nail your triceps and really work the top portion of the deadlift. This will drill solid positioning and really build your top end strength. I recommend you do these in the 10 to 15 rep range. Next up, we have heavy dumbbell pressing, which is one of my favorites as it gives you freedom of positioning, increased unilateral strength, which increases range of motion, which will develop stability, which will improve your barbell bench press. So play around with inclines, play around with declines, get used to the movement and build your volume. Finally, we have the rolling tricep extension, which might not be something you've seen before, but is what I found to be the most effective tricep exercise when I was a pure power lifter. So much so, I do them two times a week consistently, and whilst I might not be at my strongest, leanest, or largest at the moment, there's something that I keep in there to maintain my tricep strength year round. And there we have it, a top line breakdown in simple terms of how you can work towards your first two plate, two plate, bench press and get 100 kilos on the boards, or 225 if you are the other side of the Atlantic, as I will be in two weeks time. Lots of twos flying around, aren't there? Speaking of twos, if you wouldn't mind liking and subscribing, brackets and commenting down below with your thoughts, feelings, suggestions, anecdotes, or ways that people can work towards their first two plate bench press, make it a shared resource pool down below and support one another, because I'm hoping that there's a whole load of gym bros that are gonna gain a lot from this. And if you can provide them with some more insights down below, that would be fantastic. So I hope you all have enjoyed today's video and I will see you next time.